I'm Amy Goodman with Nermeen Sheikh. We end today's show with a stinging new documentary that's already generating a lot of buzz. The film is called The Pollinators and features swarms of yellow-black jacketed honeybees whose existence may determine the future of human survival. The insects pollinate nearly all the fruit, vegetables and nuts we consume. Some experts estimate one out of every three bites of food we eat depends on the work of honeybees. But the future of the insects is now in peril, with widespread reports of bee colony collapses. In the last decade and a half, the nation's beekeepers have reported staggering declines in their bee populations due to pesticides, parasites and loss of habitat. Scientists warn climate change is also threatening the insect survival, noting that bees could die off at faster rates as the earth warms. This is the trailer for the new documentary, The Pollinators. Bees are so fascinating. When you first go into a beehive, you're like worried about getting stung. And then as soon as you start watching them and seeing them on the combs, communicating with each other, it's just so fascinating, so complex. And it mostly works until we get in the way of it. Populations of honeybees are dying at levels that are unprecedented and very concerning. Close to half of the colonies in the U.S. dying every single year. Native pollinators have disappeared and, and farming has become a lot bigger and so due to all this, you know, now they need beekeepers that can move bees from one place to the other. We can learn a good deal from bees about the health of the landscapes that we inhabit and we can learn a good deal about the folly of setting up our agriculture in quite the way that we have. The agriculture is an interruption of a natural system, but it can be done thoughtfully as an interruption of a natural system with great benefits. It's going to take 20, 30 years for that ground to get back in the shape it was to sustain life for all these wild insects, birds, and fowl, and everything else. Protecting the land around us, protecting the soil under us, is really our obligation. And from that, we get delicious, nourishing products. We've been pollinating fruits and vegetables and nuts for since the 70s, 60s, 50s. Um, and we haven't had these kind of losses. We're not big beekeepers, we're just trying to hang on to our business. Well, for more, we're joined now by Peter Nelson, director of The Pollinators, also a beekeeper himself. Welcome to Democracy Now! It's great to have you with us. A mass extinction of bees? Explain. Yeah, it's just the, the losses that beekeepers have been facing has been in the last—since uh, 2005, 2006, has really been somewhere between 30 and up to 50 percent, depending on where they are in the country. And it's a little alarming. And is that true just in the United States, or are uh, bees all over the world uh, experiencing this, or is it because here in the U.S. they use more pesticides? The bees, there's a, there's a worldwide loss of insects, and I think that's been documented. Um, but here in the United States, because of their exposure to pesticides in agriculture, it's particularly pronounced. Let's turn to an excerpt from the film The Pollinators, beginning with Susan Kegley of the Pesticide Research Institute. Many crops require pollination by insects. And because the native pollinators who used to be here are no longer in large enough quantities to do that pollination, the managed honeybees have stepped in to take the, the role of pollinator. Well, pollination is a basic natural function. A lot of plants in nature need insects to transfer a pollen. And one of the most efficient is the honeybee. So basically, you know, all the good stuff we eat, you know, the vegetables and the fruits and so on, most of that needs honeybee pollination or pollination by native pollinators. The chemical companies, they figure we should eat corn, soybeans and rice and that don't need to be pollinated. And that's what they think we ought to live on. But if you like your fruits and vegetables and your nuts, a lot of that stuff need pollinated. Um, a lot of wild insects can do the job, but not as well as bringing in a commercial beekeeper to put down a thousand colonies in one area and give a good blast to the pollination. Our business has got two different ends to it. One of them is producing honey, but of course the reason honey bees are here in the first place is to pollinate our crops, you know, because one out of every three bites of food we put in our mouths is, comes from honey bee pollination. I think the general public should know that our food system is threatened by the fact that the bees are in trouble. And they should care about that because they eat food. 
And this is another clip from The Pollinators, featuring beekeeper Dave Hackenberg, who is among the first beekeepers to sound the alarm about bee colony collapse disorder in 2006. So the problem is that native pollinators have disappeared, and, and farming has become a lot bigger, and so due to all this, you know, now they need beekeepers that can move bees from one place to the other. And of course, the only bees that are really movable that you can put on the back of a truck and truck them all over the place is honeybees. An excerpt of the pollinators. Um, Peter Nelson, how does Europe deal with bees differently than the United States? Well, the European Union has placed a ban on neonicotinoid pesticides, which is huge. In fact, they just recently strengthened it because they didn't have they had, the science was showing that it was working. And uh, here we have a different setup. The, the precautionary principle that the European Union uses says that we really need to test these pesticides or fungicides or herbicides or whatever before they go into the environment to make sure they're entirely safe. And here we have kind of a different approach where we have oftentimes the, the chemical companies are doing the testing themselves and, and doing their getting their own results, and they get a conditional registration, which allows them to use the pesticides without being fully tested in the field, which—and that's a law that's they're bound by the EPA. And in the film, uh, uh, Peter, many people, including Bill McKibben, talk about the fact that bees, uh, the, the, the collapse of the bee population, is just uh, one instance of what is to come. Why is uh, what's going on now with bees a harbinger of what might come later? Well, honeybees are studied more than a lot of other insects and bees, and so, so the, the, we have data on them. And, and since they're so so well studied and documented, if the losses are like that on honeybees, it brings up the question: What's going else? What else is going on in nature with other species, with other insects? And it's important to know that honeybees are only one of four thousand species of bees in North America. I want to go to Bill McKibben, uh, co-founder of 350.org, who you interview yeah. in The Pollinators. We can learn a good deal from bees about the health of the landscapes that we inhabit. And sort of secondarily, we can learn a good deal about the folly of setting up our agriculture in quite the way that we have. It looked so efficient and concentrate everything in the ways that we've done it. But that turns out to be a false efficiency. It is the cheapest way to produce pork or corn or whatever else. But that cheapness comes at a high price, and that price is the loss of the agricultural diversity, uh, redundancy, uh, resiliency that is really beyond price. Uh, you know, it's the thing that we've built up over 10,000 years of agriculture, and now in a kind of hundred years of industrialization, we've managed to get rid of most of it. That's Bill McKibben in The Pollinators. Peter Nelson, you, too, are a beekeeper. Um, talk about—you're talking about um, uh, pesticides and how they're used in this country, also the whole issue of the climate crisis. Yeah, totally. It's—bees it's, uh, are an indicator species, so we really need to pay attention to what's going on, because our agricultural system is really dependent upon these commercial bees. You know, agriculture has gotten much more simplified, more monocultures, more chemically dependent, and so it's required to bring these bees in, because so many of the native bees that would traditionally have done pollination are not able to live there anymore. So it's become essential to bring these bees in, almost as an insurance policy for much of agriculture. And the agriculture that uses bees? Oh, it's 400 crops that uh, that we eat. It's the most nutritious and nourishing things that we eat. It's the fruits and nuts and vegetables that we eat. Things like wheat and corn are wind-pollinated. Rice is wind-pollinated. But the, the nutritious, uh, you know, foods that we have are mostly pollinated by bees. I want to thank you so much for being with us, Peter Nelson, director of the new documentary, The Pollinators. And that does it for today's show. On Friday, Democracy Now! will be broadcasting and live streaming the first-ever presidential forum on environmental justice at South Carolina State University in Orangeburg. Candidates taking part so far include Senators Elizabeth Warren and Cory Booker, businessman Tom Steyer, um, as well as Marianne Williamson and others. I'll be moderating with former EPA official Mustafa Ali. You can watch it as we live stream at democracynow.org beginning Friday evening at 6 p.m. Eastern. Also, television stations and radio stations will be running it across the country. We'll also be broadcasting from Orangeburg, from South Carolina State, tomorrow morning. Democracy Now! Democracy Now! currently accepting applications for paid six-month internships here in New York. Learn more at democracynow.org.
democracynow.org. Democracy Now! is produced by Mike Burke, Dina Geister, Carla, Sam, Carla Wills, Libby Rainey, Sam Alkoff, John Hamilton, Robbie Karen, Hani Basu, Trina Nadura, Tay Maria Studio, Maria Tarasena. I'm Amy Goodman with Nermeen Sheikh. Thank you.